the Omega Teams, a joint operation of the CIA and the Joint Special Operations Command, or JSOC, have a significant history in the context of US military and intelligence operations. The concept of these teams dates back to the early years of the Afghanistan war. The Omega program was particularly noted for its success within the special operations and CIA communities. But it depends on who you ask, since those successes are shrouded in criticism. These teams were involved in crucial operations such as the hunt for the kidnapped US soldier, Bo Bergdahl, capturing numerous individuals who became prisoners at Guantanamo Bay and playing a pivotal role in tracking and neutralizing American Al-Qaeda propagandist Adam Gadan. This program arose as a creative solution during a period when the U.S. was reluctant to deploy military forces en masse, especially following the Vietnam War. During the 1980s, amidst the Central American proxy wars between the Soviet Union and the United States, the CIA, facing limitations due to various disclosures and hearings, like the Church Committee, needed new methods to influence events in key regions. The Omega program effectively combined the military prowess of Special Forces soldiers with the covert operational capabilities of the CIA. These Omega units were found on several occasions in bases in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Yemen. Their presence is most noted in Afghanistan, in which their main objective was to conduct undeniable operations across the border into Pakistan. The main reason for the existence of the Omega teams is to hunt down high-value targets without the restrictions the military units normally have. You're not the only one if you think this holds similarities to the modus operandi of the Phoenix program in Vietnam. The teams exemplified a strategic union of Title X wartime deployment authorities of the military with the Title 50 covert operations authorities of the CIA. This synergy allowed for a powerful combination of direct action and intelligence capabilities. The teams, including elements from most of the Tier 1 and other special forces within the US military, provided the necessary military power, while the CIA contributed with vital intelligence and targeting information. The exact number of these teams isn't publicly disclosed, but their composition seems to be denoted as Omega-10, Omega-20, Omega-30, and so forth, with the highest number that I could find being Omega-60. These teams consist of highly skilled operatives from some of the most renowned units in the US military, units that were specialized in missions like hostage rescue and counterterrorism. SEAL Team 6, or Dev Gru, recognized for their involvement in high-profile operations, the 75th Ranger Regiment, and the Regimental Reconnaissance Company, skilled in special reconnaissance and advanced force operations, the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, or Night Stalkers, providing critical helicopter aviation support, and the 24th Special Tactics Squadron, the Air Force component known for its combat control and air strike coordination. Additionally, the teams are supported by the CIA's Directorate of Operations and the Special Activities Division, now called Special Activities Center. This division is primarily staffed by paramilitary operations officers, often recruited from elite military units like the Tier 1 units and Special Operations Forces, and trained extensively in covert and paramilitary operations. JSOC support was delivered for the CIA's efforts to ensure high-value targets were caught, and in turn the CIA would support JSOC wherever they could occasionally. Delta Force was not part of this endeavor, since they had their own Mohawk program, about which I made another video. The Omega teams were essentially joint CIA JSOC units, known as Hunter Killer Teams. In these teams, the CIA contributes its expertise in providing targeting intelligence, while JSOC supplies the special operations soldiers to carry out the heavy lifting of the missions. The synergy between the CIA and JSOC within the Omega framework allows for a more comprehensive approach to missions. Instead of having these two powerful bureaucracies competing for similar objectives, their joint efforts under the Omega umbrella help to access a broader and deeper range of information and operational capabilities. Historically, the origins of such collaboration can be traced back to proxy wars in the 1980s, 
where the need for creative solutions led to the merging of military and intelligence roles. This blending, often termed sheep dipping, involves placing active duty military personnel in roles traditionally associated with intelligence operations, thereby combining the aforementioned Title X military and Title 50 covert operations authorities. This unique combination of capabilities makes Omega teams highly effective in executing their missions, although they have faced criticism and challenges, including allegations of war crimes and the friction between military and CIA methodologies. The controversy was due to the fact that, although teams were composed of some of the most highly skilled soldiers and officers, their nightly raids did more harm than good and missed any significant impact in the bigger picture. Locals have been heard questioning whether the Taliban was actually the biggest enemy due to the amounts of unsuccessful operations and mafia-like style in which Omega teams operated in several regions, without much consequence. Although there is a lot to criticize, there are many successful operations made by these teams. The first one is the hunt for Bo Bergdahl. In 2009, U.S. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl was captured by the Taliban in Afghanistan. The Omega teams played a crucial role in the subsequent search and intelligence operations aimed at locating Bergdahl. This complex mission involved navigating the challenging terrain of Afghanistan and negotiating the intricate tribal and political dynamics of the region. The efforts of these teams were part of a larger strategic operation that lasted for five years until Bergdahl's eventual release in 2014, in exchange for five Taliban prisoners from Guantanamo Bay. The operation highlighted the team's capabilities in long-term, high-stakes intelligence gathering and manhunt operations in hostile environments. And perhaps the most famous one, Operation Neptune Spear, executed on May 1st, 2011. It was a critical mission aimed at eliminating Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda in Abbottabad, Pakistan. This operation was meticulously planned over several years, involving extensive intelligence work by the CIA. Navy SEALs from Dev Gru or SEAL Team 6 were tasked with carrying out the raid, which involved infiltrating bin Laden's compound using stealth Black Hawk helicopters. The mission was launched from a base in Afghanistan and conducted under the cover of darkness. The SEALs encountered bin Laden on the third floor of the compound and eliminated him in a brief firefight. In addition to bin Laden, several others in the compound, including one of bin Laden's sons and a woman, were neutralized. The operation's success was a culmination of a nearly decade-long search for bin Laden following the September 11, 2001 attacks. The body of bin Laden was later buried at sea, following Islamic customs. The operation, while successful, raised several international law and sovereignty questions, particularly regarding the U.S.'s unilateral action on Pakistani soil without Islamabad's prior knowledge. The mission significantly impacted U.S. counterterrorism efforts and marked a pivotal moment in the war on terror. Another one was the operations against al-Qaeda in Yemen, the Omega teams were instrumental in a drone strike on September 30th, 2011, that killed Anwar al awlaki an American-born cleric and a key figure in al-Qaeda in Yemen. This operation took place in the northern part of Yemen and was a significant moment in the U.S.'s expanded counterterrorism efforts beyond Afghanistan and Iraq. al awlakis death dealt an important blow to al-Qaeda's operational capabilities and propaganda efforts, as he was known for his ability to influence and recruit Westerners to the jihadist cause. Also, during Operation Iraqi Freedom, the Omega teams, a joint operation between the CIA and the JSOC, played a crucial role in stabilizing the region post-invasion and countering insurgent groups. They involved disrupting Iraqi command and control, seizing vital infrastructure, and preventing potential catastrophic actions by the Iraqi military. Their operations were important in hunting down high-value targets from the former Ba'athist regime, which was essential in the broader effort to stabilize Iraq after the overthrow of Saddam Hussein. To summarize, Omega teams are primarily engaged in high-level operations involving the capture and elimination of high-value targets, vehicle interdiction, 
and intelligence collection. They represent a fusion of CIA's intelligence capabilities with JSOC's military expertise, enabling them to undertake complex, sensitive missions across various global theaters. If you like what we're doing here, consider subscribing to never miss a new video. Leave a like and a comment about what you think of the video. Thank you for watching and see you all in the next one.